Starting something new can be really refreshing. There's new challenges, experiences, and a lot of things you learn along the way. Hey you guys, and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time seeing my face, please make sure it is not the last by clicking that little red subscription button and the bell down below to be updated for each and every future video that comes out on this channel. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. With thousands of online classes, Skillshare can help you improve your professional skill set, start that side hustle, and pursue your professional passion project. Click the link in the description box to try two free months of unlimited classes. Also, be sure to pick up your copy of my Out School Course Creation Guide. Simply head down into the description box of this video and enter your email into our mailing list and we will send out a free copy of the guide right to your inbox. Also down below in my description box by your request is everything I use in both my brick and mortar classroom, I am a K through eight music teacher, as well as my online VIP kid and out school resources. Everything on that list is not sponsored, just honestly loved and used by me each and every day. So if you wanna know what I use to film, what I use for my lighting, my microphone, everything is down below in the description box. But without any further ado, let's get into the things I wish I knew when I started teaching on OutSchool. Number one is the importance of pacing yourself, and I mean that in the sense of scheduling and what you present in your online classroom. When I first started with OutSchool, I thought, hey, I can do 13 back-to-back -back VIP kid classes, no problem, let's just set as many back-to-back -back courses as I can, and you guys, these courses, because they are self-made, take a little time to set everything up. Do you need to get a presentation out of your Google Slides? Do you need to get a microphone set up? Do you have to have things ready before the kids come into the classroom? So pace yourself. And also, once you are in the classroom, do you have enough material to fill your time? Are you going to be interactive with the students and ask them questions along the way? It's really important to allocate time and know what you're going to present in your classroom and to ensure that you have enough material prepared so that you can fill your time, whether your class is 20 minutes long or an hour long, whether it's a one-time class or a weekly class that meets every single Monday or whatever day you choose, make sure that you pace yourself. So often with people who have previously taught with VIP Kid, we receive the slides. They kind of time it out for us and they know you're gonna spend 60 to 90 seconds per various slide. And in this case, because you are creating it, pacing is the name of the game. Number two is to always remember that OutSchool will be taking 30% of your gross pay. So when you are setting things up, remind yourself that that price you set per student, again, whether it's a one-time or an ongoing class, 30% of that is already going to be taken away from you because that is the 30% fee for teaching on this platform. Nothing against that fee, it's just something to remember when you are setting up a class, the course description, the objectives, how many kids you wanna have in that class. If you're someone who wants to have experience and they're willing to teach if they only have one kid, that's totally fine. Or if you're somebody who says, I'm not gonna teach this course unless I get a minimum of three students so it's worth your time, that is also fine. A lot of teachers I've talked to said when they first started, they would take any number of kids. If it was even one, they would teach it to get the experience under their belt. But just remember, 30% of your gross pay goes to out school and then what you do take home, you are responsible for setting aside certain amounts of money depending on your state and or situation for your taxes. Millennials, pay your taxes. Number three is to not judge your course size when you're starting out. Like I mentioned in the previous number, even if you get one. Remember when you were a VIP kid, if you were, and you were so excited when you got that first booking, Think of it like that. That could be the one person that takes your arts or ceramics class on out school, love the class, leave you a great review and pick another one of your classes later on down the line. Never underestimate the value that one student can have in your out school experience. I think we're seeing and hearing from other teachers that say, hey, I had 15 kids in my class and it was great. And you only have one and you've already started the process of comparing yourself to the teacher that had 15. Don't compare, give that one student the best class that you can because you never know. That one review that the parent could leave could be what entices other parents to book classes you have down the line. Number four is to ask your existing students what suggestions they have on not only the class you just taught, but what other classes they think would be helpful on out school. For example, if you have a painting class and you're gonna be painting nature, at the end of class, you can ask the students, are there any other suggestions you guys think we should have you know, on the platform or within my class? Is there anything you think that could be done better? Students aren't used to being asked these kinds of questions and it kind of throws them back and makes 
a sense of community, really. They make it feel more like you value their time, their opinion, what they're learning, and they will be more receptive to tell you, you know, what they think and things that would make your class better. Trust me, I did it in my very first class and I got three other ideas on things to create in my courses and those classes are some of my most requested and honestly fully booked classes I have on OutSchool now. So to those kids who took my very first class th three and a half weeks ago, thank you so much. Your feedback really was valuable and I appreciate it. And number five is a shameless plug and it is to check out my OutSchool course creation guide and figure out what works best with your expertise, your profession, your experience, what would make for the best class? What would make you excited as the teacher to sit down on Zoom and educate and teach new skills to students on OutSchool. We've now reached the portion of the video where I wanna ask you guys, if I were to have a free live class where we sat down with a group of maybe 50 of us, again, completely for free, and we brainstormed ideas based on your personal expertise, experience, what you've taught. You don't have to be a classroom teacher to have a passion for something as simple as baking or painting or photography. There are a plethora of different ways to share your skills as well as a plethora of good strategic ways to market your skills so parents see what you're offering and want to book your class. If that live course is something you guys are interested in, let me know down below in the description box and definitely make sure you are signed up for my mailing list. I'm gonna be emailing out invitations solely to people on my mailing list so that I can create a full roster and know who to expect in my live course. Once again, leave me the comments down below and make sure you are signed up for my mailing list. Anyway, you guys, that is it for today's video. Honestly, those are things I wish I knew when I first started with OutSchool. Now that I have learned these lessons, I know to set aside time between each and every one of my classes. I know when I'm going to need days off. I know how to set a solid schedule that only has me working certain days of the week at certain times that fit with my schedule. A lot of people have been writing me saying, Kristen, I can only teach in the early, early mornings, and that's why VIP Kid works well for me. Can I teach in the early mornings for OutSchool? And the answer is yes. A lot of times when I teach a 9 a.m. or a 10 a.m. Eastern Standard class, I'll get a couple Eastern Standard kids, but I'll get a lot over in England. A lot of classes I teach, I'll get kids over in Europe that, you know, it's afternoon for them because I believe they're seven hours ahead of me. So when it's nine or 10 o'clock here, you know, it's early to mid afternoon over there. So yes, to answer your question short and sweet, you really do set your own hours. If you guys have any other questions concerning OutSchool and scheduling, let me know down below. If there's anything that my course and guide does not cover, also let me know down below. I've only done these graphics classes for three or four weeks now, so I am still very open to constructive criticism. And once again, I made all of those graphics on Skillshare. Those classes were 100% free, and if you want to try them, you can click the link down below in the description box and get two free months of unlimited access Access. They have classes on everything and these classes are accredited. So if you want to put on your resume that you have taken a class on photography or graphic design, really anything, you can just search their database. You can add to your skill set. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up so we can continue to please the ever present algorithm gods of YouTube. Other than that, I will see you in next week's video. Until then, bye. Hey, really quick, it is Saturday, May 9th after a month of it sitting in my inbox, I am finally going to finish my out school application just because I am scared. The world is changing every day and I'm a music teacher. So I am a specialist. I am in the arts and I know how the arts go in budgeting most things, including schools. So I know if someone has to go. So I am going to apply to out school. I'm just gonna do it see what happens. I'm not changing any VIP kid stuff right now. I'm going to keep my YouTube schedule and my Zoom classes, but if I can get the application through and put together a few classes, maybe when school finishes in 20 days, I can put together a couple classes for kids, like some sing-alongs and piano lessons and voice lessons and audition classes, things that they probably miss since, you know, if they're in the arts, they don't have them right now. So just me right now, film this in. If I never show this, great, but Maybe, just maybe this is something new that would be nice to have as a backup in case brick and mortar goes away for a little bit. We're gonna find out. Intros. Good morning, you guys. It is 7.15 on Monday, 
May 11th. It is still very early, but I am lucky enough that my first student here is a no-show. So I went and checked my email and I found out that my background check that I submitted yesterday for out school has cleared. They had you fill out an application, make a 60 second video introducing yourself. Hi out school, my name is Kristen. Christopher helped me get a beautiful shot downstairs in the music studio. Like he made the room with my box lighting look fabulous. I agreed to submit a background check and here I am 12 hours later, background check is cleared. And now I'm looking at the next steps.